Hello friends, there is another fantastic issue of 7 Days out in the world now, and in this one is a great story about Burlington grocery stores. Several of them are relocating or expanding into Burlington's south end, putting them into even closer proximity to one another, and setting the stage for a great grocery war. Now I tend to think that we have enough wars to worry about at the moment, so I thought it might be useful to give you my take on each of these grocery stores because, you know, they all have their pros and cons, and we need to learn to spread our consumer love so we can all thrive and get along together. Now, people get pretty passionate about this stuff, so I'm gonna try and get through this pretty quickly. Here we go. So let's start things off with City Market, who are set to open a brand new location on Flynn Ave. Now, the first thing you notice when you walk into a City Market is that you've just had a near-death experience because there's at least one car in that parking lot who is actively trying to run you over as you made your way to the entrance. But assuming you survive, you're gonna notice they have a great local produce section. You know exactly which farm your veggies came from. They also have a great seafood counter. But maybe you want something now, something warm, something prepared. So you head down to the hot bar and you notice that they've already pulled the breakfast sandwiches. The City Market doesn't think anyone wants a cordon bleu after 11 o'clock, and it's nonsense. It's called brunch. People love it. Sometimes you work late, and you don't want to feel shame just for sleeping in. Luckily, there's other great options. There's a sandwich counter, there's a salad bar, there's also cold prepared food, and there's even a cafe there where you can eat it at. So you get your food, you're feeling psyched, but you need to start mentally preparing for near-death experience number two. So naturally, you gotta make your way back through that parking lot where inevitably there's another car actively trying to run you over, and people assume this is gonna get better when the new location opens up, but I think it's naive to assume people are gonna start looking out for each other just because there's a newer, bigger parking lot. Moving on now to Price Chopper, which is set to renovate and become Market 32. I also have no idea what that means. But they are open 24 hours, which is absolutely crucial, because sometimes you are up at 3 a.m., you're a little bit tipsy, and then hunger strikes. Nobody's delivering food at that hour, so you need to make your way down to Price Chopper. You're going to want to do so responsibly, of course, so you call an Uber, wake up your roommate, and make him drive you. You get there, fluorescent lights, you're psyched. Naturally, you were thinking pizza in the first place, so you head to the frozen food aisle, but you need to resist this temptation, because in two hours' time, you will wake up to a smoke alarm in an apartment filled with black smoke because you passed the f*** out and forgot you put that pizza in the oven. This is now the second time you've woken up that roommate. He's pissed, he's moving out, you're going to live with a Craigslist stranger. Meanwhile, that once delicious looking pizza now looks like a chunk of charcoal. You're going to lie to yourself and say you can scrape off the top layer and find something edible underneath, but no, it is 100% ash. You will get cancer if you bite into that pot. So, when it comes to late night price chopping, you're going to want to stick to the snack aisle or maybe some ice cream. You get something like a frozen Snickers bar because it has peanuts in it, and hey, at least that's a little bit of protein. You're going to open it in the store. You're going to want to share one with the woman behind the self checkout counter because she's been there all night. You're the 53rd drunk person she's had to deal with, and she deserves a break. Also, remember to scan your price chopper card because if you spend enough money you can save a few extra pennies on things like gasoline. This brings us now to Hannaford. Now, they are set to move into the warehouse formerly known as Kmart, which is even closer to Price Chopper and their bitter rival Shaw's. And I have to be honest, Shaw's and Hannaford, this is where the distinctions start to get a little bit blurry for me. Now, they both have pharmacies, but Shaw's does have the Monopoly game a few times. No way, sir! Okay, art director Hannaford's guy... Hannaford's is way better! Okay, how did you get down here, Diane? I know where you hide, Brian. Okay. You're not a secret. They're pretty much the same. They're I mean, not they're the both same. good for pantry staples. Hannaford's they have a wild produce. harvest section they and a world the section. I get all of my you fancy piece there. Behind. You can get body wash it's for like a buck twenty nine. Lots of deodorant sales. I love Even it. For Bernie Sanders shops at Hannaford's. Wait, yep. I hear that he shops at the North Avenue Hannaford's. I go there sometimes to stalk him. Don't tell him I said that. Okay, I guess that settles that. See, there's nothing to fight about. They're all great grocery stores. On Friday, a story came out about a substitute teacher in Georgia, Vermont, who was immediately fired after demonstrating a Nazi salute to a group of third graders. As if that story wasn't bizarre and depressing enough already, I noticed several comments on the Seven Days website from people seeking further clarification because the details of the story just didn't justify immediate dismissal. So to help address that confusion, I've decided to compile a list of all the times it is okay to teach a child how to give a Nazi salute. And that concludes our presentation. What is wrong with you? The story clearly stated that these students were on their way to the cafeteria and this teacher didn't just demonstrate a Nazi salute, she had them raise their hands and join her in a Nazi salute. Even if this was a World War II themed lunch, that is not even remotely appropriate. Sure, you can argue that it's important to recognize a Nazi salute when you see one so you know which people to run away from as soon as possible, but that could easily be accomplished with a historical photograph when the students are in high school, not third grade. Here's a thought. If you find yourself sitting on the computer thinking of times where it might be okay to get third graders to join you in a Nazi salute, maybe it's time to Step away from the internet. Maybe 
head down to the Home and Garden Center and see if tiki torches are on sale. Wow. Just wow. Can't wait to see what next week brings. Anyway, thanks for joining us as usual. I'll see you again next time. There is another great issue of Seven Days on the Stands. <laughs>